Hi and welcome to this third episode of the Thoughtful Knitter video journal. My name's Ailey and I'm coming to you from the very tip top of the Scottish mainland. Um, I'm going to put my name on the screen here because I watched the auto captions on the last episode and obviously with my accent and it being a Scottish name it's picking up really strangely so I will write my name here so, you, so that you know what it what it is. It's not Ailey, it's not Ely, it's Ailey. Um, anyway, that aside, it's really, really nice to have you joining me. Um, if you've been before, hello, it's nice to see you again. And if this is your first time joining, then it's fantastic to have you here and I hope you feel really, really welcome. So I'm recording this a good week or so later than I had anticipated because uh, I have been choked full of the cold. So this is the first day that I haven't been snot snotting, sneezing or coughing uncontrollably for the last uh, over a week. So it's not Covid, it's just a nasty persistent one that is doing the rounds at the moment. I'm just going to start off just with a very quick rundown of what the channel's about for anyone who's new. Um, I tend to have very short videos, they're only up to a maximum of 30 minutes and they're divided into short segments. Um, there are timestamps for each segment that you'll find in the description box down here. Um, the reason behind this is that I want it to be a really accessible place for people who struggle with fatigue or concentration for whatever reason. Um, and it's definitely not a slight on any other podcasts out there. It's just as someone who needs to pace themselves, I'm sure there are some people out there who are fed up hearing the word pace, um, but as someone who has to do that, um, I find, well it's something, it's just a fact of life, it's just something I have to do. Um, but I do find it really difficult when it's something that I'm enjoying. So whether that be spending time with family, going out for walks, being outside, my knitting, or watching podcasts or programmes that I enjoy, I find it pretty hard to switch off when I should. So um, if you are a person who has been told by a health professional that you should be pacing, then this will be a safe spot for you because I'm going to pace it for you. Um, so it's just that tiny little oasis in the world where you don't have to think about it and it will be done on your behalf. There's currently a giveaway going on YouTube. Um, if you look back at my last episode, it's a bonus episode, there's a giveaway going there as a, a gratitude giveaway um, to celebrate the start of this channel and the warm welcome that you've all given me. Um, it is going to be running until the 5th of November, so you've still got time to enter. I'll probably record my next video just round about then so I can um, announce the winner on the next video. Um, but if you want to enter, I'll put a wee picture up of what you can win. Um, and yeah, just go over to that video and have a watch and enter. If you'd like to. So I think that's all the introduction stuff for today. Um, let's get on to the content, the knitting content. So we'll start off with what I'm wearing. Okay, so this beautiful shawl is, is another design by Liz Cork, who I spoke about in my first episode. Um, she does beautiful designs, all accessories, I don't think she's got any garments. Um, she's a Scottish designer and she always names her designs in Gaelic. So this one is named after these cables which are like the effect of rippling on the sea. Um, and it is called, now I have looked this up, um, so if there's anyone out there who has the Gaelic, um, and I'm saying it wrong, I'm really sorry, but this is called the Twin, Twin Vega, I think. <laughs> um, and it is an asymmetric uh, 
triangle and it has got this beautiful interlinked um, cable along the side. You can see that. So it goes the whole way down. And I mean, really, the main reason I bought this is because of the colour of the yarn. So this this is um, knit in the original uh, yarn that the pattern calls for. Um, and I also absolutely adored this cable. So the really clever thing about this design is that it is completely reversible. So wait till I show you, I'll just switch it round. So that cable works exactly the same on that side and on that side. Um, and it's really, it's a really easy, simple technique, but very effective. So yeah, I absolutely think this is just beautiful. There we go. And it is knit in Lottie Knits. Uh, it's a DK weight shawl. So it was knit on four millimeter needles and it is knit in Lottie Knits. A glow DK, yes, um, which is so soft and drapey, and oh, it's beautiful. Um, it is sixty percent merino, twenty percent silk, and twenty percent yak. And I've never actually knit with yak before, and oh, I can see why people like it for shawls. It's so lovely. Um, so yes, I, I bought that pattern about a year ago when it came out and was prompted into action to cast on this summer because there were a few different knit-alongs going um, for shawls. But as I was saying to one of my friends, I keep knitting shawls because I really enjoy knitting them. Um, you norm There's not the same kind of worry about gauge and fit and whatnot and quite often you get to really indulge in learning new techniques um, but I don't really wear them so I am vowing that this is my last shawl for quite some time unless um, somebody requests one as a present but yeah I would definitely recommend if you are a shawl wearer I would recommend this pattern it comes in three sizes using either one, two or three hanks of DK weight yarn. I knit it in the second size and I kind of wish I'd knit it in the, the third size because it would have, it's just so cosy. I would quite like to cosy myself up completely in it. Um, but I mean, as it is, it's still, it's still a good size. Um, ah, yes, it's lovely. So I'll just I'll just put it back on, keep my neck all nice and warm. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I needed to tell you about this one. I would recommend it. Let's go on to my finished objects for the last few weeks. The first one is one that I was working on on the last two episodes, and it is the Rothy Marcus cowl. By Mika John um, and I was planning to make it really long as the pattern calls for but I actually decided to cut it short and make it just a single layer so this is it finished I haven't washed or blocked it yet um, so this was, I had knit from here right down to there the last time I showed it and I've just finished off this far and grafted these bits together. It was a provisional cast on. It is knit in three different yarns. Um, the first two are from Black Isle Yarns and are in her Ochen base. And her Ochen base is a 40% Blueface Leicester, 
30% Cheviot and 30% Shetland, um, a sport weight woolen spun yarn. Love it. And this is some leftovers that I had from a project earlier in the year. It's called Winter Seas. And then the contrast colour here, the green here is called seaweed, it's the same base. And not that you can tell, but this colour and the colour back here are actually different. So this bit right up to here is the winter seas with um Aachen base, and then in this part. The background colour that you see is actually um, Marina Skua Mendip 4-ply yarn, which is also a woolen spun yarn and I would call a sport weight. It's from a single flock of Shetland Cross sheep. I'll, maybe I'll pop this on to give you a wee look. Oh, yes. So it's going to be nice and warm and cosy. Yeah, stick it under a jacket and it'll be fantastic. So that's the first FO. And I've got another two which are, I don't even know if, they're, if you would class them as proper finished objects because they're tiny. They're for a baby. I had this tiny little um, mini. It's a 20 gram mini of sport weight Blueface Leicester that came from the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company. It's not one that she stocks. Um, and I've had this for a couple of years and could never really decide what to do with it because it's too nice to go into like a scrappy project. But it's on also only 60 metres long. So um, a friend, a Woolly friend has recently had a little girl and I thought, perfect, this is this is what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to make tiny little scratch mitts um, with this mini. And that's what I did. So I made these tiny little things. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. So they are a free pattern, which I'll link in the description box, um, by Caitlin Falk Wong. Um, I, I, they were originally designed for a six month old so what I did is I reduced the needle size, I went down to a three millimeter needle and I also reduced the length here before I started the decreases. Um, but yeah, so there's a couple of scratch mitts which I hope will be quite useful and I had loads of yarn left um, from this wee ball, so I then thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just knit a couple of, you know, a little pair of socks as well. Um, so I knit these. And they are from a pattern from um, this book here. which is the Debbie Bliss Ultimate Book of Baby Knits. And I used to knit a lot from that before I discovered online patterns. Um, and they're actually really good, although most of them are, are knit flat, which is not my preference. So if I was to knit anything from it nowadays, I would probably convert it to knitting in the round. Um, but she has a cute little pattern in that book called the two-tone socks. So again, I just knit it on a slightly smaller needle because I think the smallest size was for three months and I wanted newborn. So I am, um, again, I did it on a three millimeter needle and yeah, I think everything else was the same as the pattern. So yeah, this cute little set will be winging its way to a new baby very shortly. So let's go on to what I'm working on at the moment. The first thing I am working on is another Fair Isle hat. 
and I am very late to the party with this one. This is Da Crofter's Cape and it is this year's Shetland Wool Week pattern. And it's knitting up beautifully. Um, I can take no credit whatsoever for this colourway because this is one of the official ones. This is the Uradale colourway. Um, I hadn't ever used their yarn before so I wanted to give it a go and really really enjoyed these colours together. Um, yeah and I even did a swatch. I've never done a swatch for anything hat related before um, but I did. So um, I, was, I think I was a bit inspired by Shetland Wool Week and doing things properly. So uh, here is the swatch here and do you know it was actually a really useful process because like I said in previous episodes I'm quite a tight knitter and generally have to increase my needle size to get gauge. Um, so when I swatched I did increase needle size. I'm knitting the middle size and the pattern had told me to use a 2.75 millimeter needle but I thought oh, I'll do it on a 3. So I did it on the 3 and discovered that actually it was a bit looser than the gauge they were asking for. So um, it's meant that I've gone down to the specified um, needle size of 275 for this and I've tried it on and it's great, fits fine. Um, yeah, so, oh, better, sh better show you my floats. <laughs> Everyone loves a float. So here you go, have a flash. I don't know if you can see them properly. Oh, the other thing, the reason I was going to show you this is, um, now I, I'm pretty sure I haven't made this up myself because I'm not that clever, but um, when I knit Fair Isle for myself, I normally just knot the ends because sewing them all in, who's got time, who's got patience. Um, but I cast this on not really knowing who it's for. I mean chances are it is for me because I really like the colours but I do have a lot of hats at this point um, so it might end up with somebody else and I thought oh, I'm gonna have to sew all the ends in again. Um, so to try and make life easier on myself, um, a few stitches, maybe half a dozen stitches before the end of the round, I have broken the yarns if there's a colour change and I have spit spliced them to the next one. Um, and it's more or less worked. Um, let me see if there's any messiness. Like you might be able to see here that that stitch is half gold and half green and that's because it's hit right on my splicing. Um, but yeah, it's making, it's making life an awful lot easier. So if you hate um, ends as much as me and love woolly wools as much as me, um, here is an option for you spit splice on your colour work. Top tip. So my second work in progress. I'm going to give it a section all of its own because this thing is a saga. I decided whenever the pattern came out like two years ago, three years ago, can't remember, that I wanted to knit The Shifty by Andrea Mowry. Absolutely adored it and went about, you know, set it aside on my favourites and went about looking for different yarns for it. Um, and I don't think I really quite realised at the time that most of the magic from that jumper is due to the colour change in yarn. So it's due to the spin cycle. Um, so I think I'd bought a few different options and then did some swatching, which is a whole other story. I 
swatched goodness knows how many times in goodness knows how many combinations, never once got anywhere near a gauge. Um, so when I eventually settled on my last option, my final option, um, I decided just to go with something that I liked the look of and do some calculations and knit a different size if need be. So, um, yes, this is one of those tales of woe of having spent far too much time and far, 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 far too much money on a garment before you even start it. And, um, I, I mean, spin cycle yarns just isn't in my budget, but when I look back on how much I've spent on false starts for this project, I would have been cheaper probably buying the spin cycle yarns <laughs> and probably be happier with the end result. But yeah, a few weeks ago, I, I was saying that I was itching to cast something else new on, and but really didn't want to have to swatch. And I had already swatched for this project, so I knew it was ready to go. So I thought, oh, that's fine, I'm just gonna cast it on. So um, with my swatch, I had worked out that um, I was gonna have to knit either the smallest size or the second size because my gauge was an awful lot looser. Um, and the smallest size I thought was gonna be too much negative ease. And I thought it would be safer to go for the second size, which would have given me a 40 inch bust. So that's what I did. So I cast it on, this is it. I cast it on, I got completely addicted. It's a really, enjoyable knit. It just is like one of those, very much one of those like, just another roll, just another colour change. Um, so I have three different uh, yarns here which do not show up that well. That's a bit better. This is one colour, that's another colour and that's the third colour. And then my background is a kind of variegated um, blues and yellows and greens. So I cast it on, I did the whole yoke, I tried it on, I thought, mm, this looks a bit too big. I'll just keep going because I'm enjoying it and I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, it's not fine. It's colossal. So um, I'm going to try it on so you can see what I'm talking about. Just bear with me. So this is the yoke and it's got all this material in the back like it's absolutely enormous it doesn't look as bad at the front but again it's, it's quite bumpfully yeah so at the moment this is somewhat of a crafting conundrum for me and maybe you can help me because I am not adverse to ripping the whole way back here and knit in a smaller size or omitting these last um, she was, it's enormous. These last increases with all this fabric here. Um, because like I said, it was, it was actually quite an enjoyable knit. Um, but I'm not actually that convinced that I love this color combination either. So these are my colors. This is my main color, which is um, another Black Isle Yarns um, base. It's her Blue Face Leicester Alpaca base and it's in the colourway Dragon. So that is my background main colour. And then the first strip here is in this one here, um, which is a Cookston Crafts it's 100% BFL and it is in the colourway Granite Speckle. So it's kind of grey with some blues and other brighter pops of yellow and the old pink and purple and whatnot. So that, that's the first um, contrast. And then the second contrast here 
is this one, which is a Stranded Dye Works, also in 100% BFL. No, it's not. It's 80% BFL, 20% uh, nylon. And it's in the colour we 4224. And it's a lovely kind of variegated greens and autumnal kind of colours. And the final one here is also a Stranded Dye Works in the same base. And this one is called Orange Tabby. So I had thought that they would gradiate quite nicely and be quite different from one another. And to be honest, I think these two work quite well together. But these two in the actual garment look very, very similar. So it's quite difficult to tell that that and that is a different colour. Um, yeah, so I would be really interested if you had an opinion either way as to what I should do. Um, I'm going to have to rip back in a way, whether it be to up here and amongst all the um, increases or whether it's just the whole thing and get the yarn back. Um, my reasoning for using these yarns is that I bought most of them quite a few years ago now and um, I've since kind of gotten a bit more wise to my tastes and have realised that just because I love the way that something looks in the hank or wound up doesn't mean that I like the way it looks when it is knitted in a garment. Um, so I quite often find that really variegated yarns I absolutely adore when I can see them in the hank but they're really not for me when I see them in a garment um, and I, that's just personal preference. I know a lot of people really like it and they really suit it but um, it's just I'm maybe I'm just a bit of a plain Jane but um, I prefer kind of tonals or solids um, so I thought these were quite a good way to use up this project was quite a good way to use up those kind of yarns um, but We'll see. I've I've had it sitting for over a week and a half now, kind of looking at it, trying to decide, and I don't hate it as much as I did a week and a half ago. <laughs> so um, any feedback would be gratefully received, whatever you think. I think that's everything for today. Thanks so much for joining me and for bearing with me while I had the delay in recording. Um, I really hope that you have a nice couple of weeks yet um, until I can record again. Um, remember to go and um, take part in the giveaway if you would like to. And um, good luck. See you next time. Take care.